think you, you can never really be ready. Okay, sasa mimi mm-hmm. nangoja ile siku sasa nitakuwa yes, sasa I'm, I'm man enough ninaweza kuwa mzee wa nyumba. I think since marriage ni God alianzisha, he's the only one who can sustain it. And let's not get to a point where I'm like nasema I want to be financially stable to start a family. Because even when you're financially stable, it is the same God who will sustain those finances. It is the same God who will keep you at your workplace and give you a promotion. Si wewe. So when you find someone who like is worth waiting for, when you find someone who is worth fighting for, come on. Like just go with it. God will sustain you. Well, hello there and Bwana Yesu asifiwe. What a great joy and privilege it is to be with you yet one more time. My name is Brian Moshegadi and this is Harvest Conversation. It's so good to be with you one more time. It's been um, about a week since we were here last and we want to keep it right there. We are still talking about relationships and today on set, as we promised, we have one more couple that is here to just share with us words of life. I am excited. I've been looking forward to it. We've been planning for a while and we thank God for the opportunity to do this. As has been our custom, please let other people know that we are on. Let other people know that we are on. Share the link with them. Let them know that we have more wisdom coming our way today to the glory of God the Father. Remember always, if you have questions, you can reach out to us to the numbers on your screen and let us uh, know. What do you want to know? Do you have questions for this couple? Do you have questions concerning relationships? Do you have questions concerning our programs or just something else? Let us know. Reach out to us. Give us some feedback as well. If you're getting blessed by these sessions, if you're learning things, let us know either in the comment section or through the numbers on your screen. But we want to get right into it right now. Today on set with me, I have um, a wonderful couple that I've known for quite a bit now and I want to allow them the honor of introducing themselves. We're going to start with the gentleman in the middle. He's going to let us know his name, what he does and if he's married, how long he's been married. Yes, Karibu sana on set, Mr. Marira. Thank you very much. My name is Peterson Dungu Marira. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I am married to one wife, uh, one lady, and we have three children, and there is one other daughter, and that makes four children. And I am glad to be here. Thank you very much, Mr. Marira. We call him Mr. Marira, even though uh, he said Ndungu Marira, but we call him uh, Mr. Marira Osa Peterson. All right, to the very end, we have his lovely wife and we want to allow her to introduce herself, Karibu Mom. Thank you, and uh, I take this opportunity to thank God even for the privilege to be here. Uh, my name is Jane Wangari Ndungu, or Jane Wangari Marira, as most people know me and I'm born again, I love Jesus. Uh, we are here uh, just to share uh, what God has done for us in our marriage for the last 43 years, and we are grateful because we know that it is God who has brought us thus, thus far. Amen. Amen, thank you so much. I don't know whether you heard that. They've been married for 43 years. That's longer than my own existence myself it's about 13 years longer than i have been alive and i think that's it's very exciting to me to just hear and i'll share to you as well to just hear people who've been married this long and they look so good they look so young i don't think you would imagine uh, that that's it so i want to know what would be the secret about it all but before we get to that um we'd like to know usually there's both versions to the story but we want to hear both of them um how did you meet um, how did you meet those those many years ago? Mom. You want to start? I thought he would start. <laughs> I, I can, I can, certainly. Okay. <laughs> um, ours is a bit unique because we come from the same village and there is a time he used to stay in shags, the colonial shags. And so... Um, and my father and her father were friends. We were family friends. So we started meeting very early, uh, but not for marriage purpose. 
Uh, and so I knew her as she grew up, mm -hmm. as I went to school, and I used to pass through her house uh, as I walked to school. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a long relationship before it translated to a marriage. But when I got to a point where I thought it's time to get married, then I thought of who I would like to get married to, and there she was. Wow. About which year, what year was that when you started, um, you know, just relating even as friends in those early days? You mentioned um, colonial times. Oh, how long ago? That's <laughs> from um, 60s, early 60s. Wow. Early wow. 60s. All right. Um, so growing so that's that's that version of the story you you are both friends uh from your earlier years um you know growing up not even thinking about marriage uh so was it just as a follow-up question was it automatic for you to just think among the pool of people that you knew when you started thinking marriage was it automatic for you to think um jane is the girl i want to go for no it was not automatic mm -hmm. um i was thinking about a wife who would be good mm -hmm. and character for me stood out mm -hmm. and I had a whole record of her mm -hmm. and how she behaves and how she had been brought up mm -hmm. and so it was easy for me uh, when I knew that this is the right person mm -hmm. I was not a good person myself but I wanted a good <laughs> uh, a good wife so when I looked around and I my ears were getting uh, is it like you no. <laughs> Shots fired. I, 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 think, I think you have beaten me with one ear. <laughs> and when I got to that time, I thought, now it's time I got married. Wow. So I got very serious to looking for options yeah. for marrying. Uh -huh. And I'm very glad I landed on Jane. Okay. I have given her name Abigail. Uh -huh. Because she didn't say she is Abigail. But even if you look at my phone, mm -hmm. her name is Abigail. To me, you call her Jane. Yes. Uh, but I learned that she's a very wise woman. Mm -hmm. She is able to advise me and advise others. And so uh, my na the name I gave her is Abigail. I also have another name, I, uh, um, Elijah. Mm -hmm. And Elijah was given by a friend who has since rested a year ago. Um, yeah, because he saw me. Uh, making very many errors and doing very many things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And he thought I had the spirit of Elijah. Mm -hmm. So I got the name Elijah. Okay. Yeah. So in, in other words, we'd call you also Elijah and Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> if right. you like, yes. All right. So character. I want to, we want to come back to that because you've mentioned character. Uh, and I think that's one, one thing we want to come back to. Uh, but just before we come to that, uh, going back to... Uh, to Jane, um, how was it like uh, now picking it up from those earlier years uh, with the coming from the childhood place? How was it like, you know, relating with uh, Sir Peterson throughout the throughout your younger years before you got married? Okay, as he said, uh, those early years, none of us thought that it would ever end up in marriage, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, we grew up as friends, family friends. Our dads were, you know, our parents were great friends mm -hmm. to an extent that when my father came to work in Nairobi and also his father, one, they went to the same school uh -huh. uh, those days. Mm -hmm. And when they came to Nairobi to be employed, they rented the same house. So they parted ways when each of them got married. Uh, you know, to stay now mm -hmm. separately. Mm -hmm. So even as we grew up as children, you know, none of us thought that we would ever be, you know, mm -hmm. be a couple. Uh, so it was a surprise. Mm -hmm. I must say for me, it was a surprise uh, in that he was older than I. Uh, not so many years, but he was ahead of me. Mm -hmm. So, I actually related more with his brothers, mm -hmm. <laughs> his younger brothers, mm -hmm. uh, than, than, my, than, than, you know, than him. Mm -hmm. uh, 
He also was a great friend of my older brother. Yeah. The, you know, they used to be very good friends. Mm -hmm. So even when he started eyeing me and, you know, came home frequently after he had started working, yeah. my parents thought he was coming for, you know, to visit my elder brother. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, because yeah. that was his friend. Yeah. It was very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but it, it became so, so, you know, so frequent mm -hmm. that my mother now started questioning. This was after he had finished university, he, has worked, he had worked for five years. Mm -hmm. I had uh, finished all levels mm -hmm. and I was, you know, planning to go for A levels. Mm -hmm. But before I went to Form 5, you know, he used to come over so many times during the holidays. Yeah. And my mother, you know, women have that sixth. <laughs> yes. She used to question, you know, why is Ndongo always coming here? One, my brother is in Nairobi. Uh, me, I'm in Shags during the holidays with my mother. But he would come all the way from wherever he was working, at the river then, mm -hmm. drive over the weekend and come and visit us. So my mom had this sense of, no, there must be something more than, but you know, I always, whenever she asked me, I said, no, there is nothing, nothing. I mean, this is a family friend. But back in my mind, I knew there was something which I didn't want to, you know, I didn't, I told my mind, I don't want to, to, to be convinced that that is what he's after yeah. because I have to pursue my, my studies. Yes. So I went ahead went to form six, five and six. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it was, I went to Machako's girls for A-levels. Mm -hmm. That was very near where he was working then. He was working for Kenya Meat Commission yeah. at the river. Mm -hmm. So it was so convenient for him to visit me at school <laughs> over the weekends. So that's how we started relating. Okay. But I, he knew there was nothing that would work out until I finished my school. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's a very interesting story. It feels, it feels like things were just aligning in the favor of Sir Peterson. Mm. It, it is the admission to school, it is the brother who was a friend, it was the parents who were friends even before that. Um, and that's, I, I feel like that's a rare blessing, speaking on behalf of other young men. Uh, out there. I feel like that's such a rare blessing. I want us to move into, uh, now you've, you've already begun relating. You're in school and he has the opportunity of coming to visit you. Uh, let's, uh, as, we, as we move now into the courtship back then, um, how, did that go? how did that begin? Uh, I think I'll throw that to Sir Peterson. Uh, like we said earlier, it was a progression. Uh, we had our fathers went to Kagumo uh, school and they grew up together, they worked together, they lived in the same houses. So it was like the friendship was cemented already, even ourselves as we grew up. So <clears throat> that was good foundation. So it cuts short the courtship uh, so that you don't have to have it for a long time because mm -hmm. we knew each other very much. Mm -hmm. And when she went to Machako's Girls High School, then me, I was very anxious to uh, get married yeah. and she was kind of resistant uh, and I was getting concerned that she was <laughs> resisting but I think her concern was education mm -hmm. and I was not born again mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. and so I interrupted her going on to university she yeah. did the A levels alright yeah. but she couldn't continue to the university level uh -huh. <clears throat> and so we got married in February uh -huh. um, yeah and she had a child, yeah. our firstborn, yes. that same year. Okay. And we had to wait a long time before I remembered I did something that was not right. Mm -hmm. And so she went back to school, to university, to read after she had had the three children. And I was with the children as she went to my university. Wow. Uh, that's very loaded. I want, to, <laughs> I want to pick that up in just a bit. So um, 
So you got married the same year that she, after she finished um, yes, her A levels, after she did her A levels, you got married, uh, and within the same year of, of um, you know getting married, you got your firstborn, yes. um, and then you had to come back and honor a promise that you had made years later. Yes. After after now, all your kids have been born, um, and the offer to stay the kids stay with the kids as she was in school was she wh were you doing a school uh, part time did they, did they have the system at, as as you were doing it no Ama? it was full time i had to relocate to eldoret wow. Moy university yeah and leave him with <laughs> the children but i used to come over the weekends uh -huh. when i'm not coming he drives with them to come for the weekend Wow, Ab about how, how young was your youngest at that time? Hmm. I think she was, uh, she was like four, five. Five, yeah. five, five years or so. Five. Wow. Mm. Yeah. All right, and so you'd, you'd, you'd make the drives to Elder. Eldoret. Were you living around in Nairobi? We were or? living in Kambu. In Kambu. So it's still quite the distance. Yeah, quite a distance, 300 kilometers. And you drive all the way with the three yeah. kids, yeah. and after you're done with, the, with visiting mommy, you'd come all the way back. Come back yes. Wow, what what was what was what was it like in that season? Um, you know, staying with the kids, um, knowing that mom is away in school. What 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 would you describe that season as? It was a very special thing because I got to know them better. Mm -hmm. I spent more time with them driving up 300 kilometers, staying and coming back. I remember at one point our children, we went to Sirikwa Hotel and we spent the night there. And we always remember the breakfast then. Yeah. And we, that was the first time we went for a buffet where you can pick up all the sausages that you needed <laughs> and so on. And we had our fill. And the children had a very good time because we would, I would challenge them as they came back. Yeah. And as we went down uh, uh, Mount Summit, mm -hmm. I would challenge them to say Bible verses. And whoever would know or say it, by the time we go to Nakuru, then would get sausages and so on. And they still remember those verses, wow. even today. Wow. So it was a very good time. Separation makes you realize somebody is dear. I got to know what she does, what she was doing, because I had to pick up, yeah. and I was everything yeah. uh, when she was away for three years. It was three years. Three eh? and a half. Three and a half years. So it was a very special time. Separation is good in that when you survive it, you actually know the value wow. of the relationship. It's much higher than you normally assume. That's a very powerful point about um, separation, and I think it's something that they say in English: uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder, or something like that. Um, and, and what about for you, uh, Mrs. Marira? What was the experience like for you being away in school and um, knowing you have your three children back at home? Have we finished with courtship? No, we are still we, we are still there. You can still <laughs> you can still talk about it. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, it was actually very very tough. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were many times I was feeling like giving up. I mean, just pack my things and, yeah. and come back home. Uh, for one, you know, that experience of being in school with young, very young, <laughs> very young people, uh, people who had gone through NYS mm -hmm. program, so when they came to university, it's like they owned everything, the language. It was very, very hard for me to, you know, to put up. Yeah. Uh, being in the hostels with them. And then when my family comes, you know, it's like, what is this mother <laughs> doing here? So it was a, a, actually very tough. Uh, but I thank God that I went through it. Uh, I went through it successively, but it's like that experience made me feel like I'll never again <laughs> uh -huh. leave my children behind uh, for the sake of studies. Yeah, because of the experiences that 
I had. I knew what he was going through at home. Sometimes the children would, you know, call me, mm -hmm. and you know when they are, when they feel their father is not understanding them, <laughs> or they have homework and yeah. father is not available, he's at work. Mm -hmm. So when you hear your kid calling you, they are crying. Uh, I have this homework, and daddy is not at home. You know, yeah. as a mother, you really feel like you want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I thank God it was, I went through it mm -hmm. successively. But they also learned how to cook. Oh, yes. They still remember. Oh. Because I taught them how to cook <laughs> in her absence. Yeah. yeah. Because you were, not, you were not home all the time, you were still working. I was working. Was yeah. still working. And working 50 kilometers away. Wow. Yeah. So it was, st you were in transit most of the time? Most of the time. Yeah, but from Limuru, Nairobi, yeah. every day. Was there ever a time where uh, both of you were not home? Did you... Did you have a time where you needed maybe to travel because of work or something like that? No. no. Oh, okay. Then that I, came later. That came later, but she would be at home. Mm -hmm. uh, when we traveled, I, I, I worked outside the country for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so we would have the children and her come over. Mm -hmm. And I would come over mm -hmm. and so on. So there was no time the children were alone. Uh -huh. uh, I, I was there or she was there. Uh -huh. uh, but some, some of them were away when we, both of us were outside the country. Uh -huh. yeah. um, just, just back to that, it's, I, it's very intriguing. Just, um, is any of it something that either, have, had you talked about uh, what that kind of life would be? Uh, had you looked at what it, had you seen it before marriage? I think that's what I'm trying to ask. Had you, had you seen that when we get in, you will go back to school, and there will be kids, and there will be there will be traveling. My job will require traveling. Had you thought about that kind of dynamic, where you will be on the road for 300 kilometers, or they will have to travel outside the country to come and be with you? Was that ever a conversation you had had during your courtship? Uh, not during coaching. <laughs> <laughs> As we went into it, yeah. then we would know the implication of yeah. going to school for three years. Yeah. The kind of sacrifice that you would make. Uh, but also going out of the country and working out there, it, it was a dream, like mm -hmm. since I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would have asked the question, because my father would have traveled uh, very much and worked outside in Holland, in Australia, in the Philippines, in Britain, and so on. And I was just a, a primary school kid. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to the airport to get him when he arrived. Mm -hmm. And we would go with a bus to welcome him and then go to a hotel in town. That's including so the whole village. So that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you would have the whole clan uh, going for him. So I remember at some point saying, wow, shall I ever, ever go to those countries? Mm. So when I looked back and I found myself going out to more countries and yeah. working out there, then I, I, I thought, dreams are very, very important. You are allowed to dream and be what you want to be. And if God has allowed that thought to be in you, mm -hmm. because it's him who plants thoughts in us, there is a capacity that he has placed beside it mm -hmm. for it to happen. Wow. So if it's not thought, then it's not possible for it to happen. But if it has been thought, mm -hmm. it's possible. That's a PowerPoint right there, that if it's not thought, then it's not possible for it to happen. But if it has been thought, there's a capacity uh, inside for it to happen. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking marriage? Are you thinking um, your career? You're thinking about whatever it is that, uh, wherever it is that God has placed you. If it's not thought, it's not possible for it to happen. I think that's a really, that's a really, really powerful point. I want us to just um, go, just a, take a bit of a step back and look at... Um, the, the the marriage part when you guys decided now it's time for us to you know um jane is done with school so now we are going to get married uh were you thinking at that time uh, or, or in that day and age was it a thing to think weddings big weddings or was it uh, this is how we're going to do it how how was it like for for you people at that time uh oh you want to answer okay <laughs> I think uh, ours, as he said, mm -hmm. he said it was a unique one. Yeah. For one, we didn't have that long time of 
you know, coating. what you call coating, what yeah. we, you yeah. know, <laughs> what we see today. We didn't have much of that, but each of us knew we were, you know, we were okay mm -hmm. and we were meant for each other. Yes. I had no doubt mm -hmm. that he was serious with me. Very so, serious. <laughs> <laughs> so even as I was, you know, doing my A-levels in my sixth year, uh, I knew what I was going to get into uh, and it was, you know, there was no way about it. Yeah. And I remember, you know, there was a time I, I asked him if he could give me more time, uh, you know, just to, you know how that feeling, that feeling of now you have finished school, and you, you need a break. You, you need a break. You want to feel <laughs> uh, free and also relate with your peers. I didn't have that opportunity. Uh, the reason being, his younger brother, who was a Christian then, as you are not. Okay, we were church people, but we were not born again. So his younger brother, who is now a pastor, you know, felt like he was taking too long to marry. So he went ahead and planned for his wedding and, you know, got married. Mm -hmm. And I think that, he, he talks about it, it really pained him. It, it was. It, <laughs> it was really, I'm the old one, <laughs> and then my brother gets married, and he doesn't discuss it with me. <laughs> then I thought it's time that I got married. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big push. And I still remember today that if you take, see the photo that was taken at Neela studio mm -hmm. for the wedding, that would be family and the couple, mm -hmm. I was not there. Oh. I opted out. And now I can't get in again. Oh, man. <laughs> but I'm at least bold enough to talk about it. <laughs> it was foolishness. <laughs> I was selfish, and it is not good to be selfish. Mm -hmm. um, you should let things go the way they go, mm -hmm. uh, because somebody can have uh, not the insight mm -hmm. to talk about it, and therefore miss it. Mm -hmm. And I was not born again, he was born again. Yeah. So he also wanted to do it, and he was of age. Yeah. Me, I was 29, so mm -hmm. that was quite still. Yeah. There were guys who had gotten married immediately, we left university at 24. Oh but I took on five years before I got married. Mm -hmm. So the wedding had to come very quickly, mm -hmm. coming back to your question. Mm -hmm. And those days, we never used to go for help outside us mm -hmm. to arrange a wedding. The wedding was a family matter, and more so you and your father. And a few friends, your uncles, your aunts, and so on. And so the planning was much easier mm -hmm. because it was not about other people. Yeah. It's about us, and we managed to arrange it. It happened at St. Mark's uh, Anglican Church in Westlands, and we had, uh, we, we had the guests who came and so on. But the simplicity of the wedding it wasn't going to happen like make it very different and very big and so on. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you prepared bread and butter and tea, and, and that was it. Oh. You, you didn't have food. And, and, and rice for the, the high for, table. For the high oh, table. Oh. So you, you can afford it. It wasn't comparing with others, that other wedding compared with mine, no. Mm -hmm. I'm doing mine, and me, I'm me. Mm -hmm. We are we. Mm -hmm. And we go by our cloth that we have. Yeah. So we still remember that we enjoyed it, and we still had gifts brought to us. And I still, I think we still have the list of mm -hmm. the, the giving. And I still remember there are some who gave five shillings during that day, uh, and we still hold it precious. To us. So these days it's a bit different, but I think the emphasis should not be my wedding to be like that other wedding. Mm -hmm. It should be made simple. It sh you should be yourself rather than like so and so. Where do, how do I know where you came from? 
or who you are, is your grandfather and giving you what. <laughs> I go by what I am, not according to somebody else. That's because true. we are very different. That's true. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's a lot of insight. I'm still thinking about the bread and the butter and the rice only for the high table. That, I mean, good days. I think good days. I want to also follow that up to you, uh, Mrs. Marira. Um, this, this thing, uh, I don't know, but I hear girls talking about it, about my dream wedding. Oh, my dream wedding, my, you know, this, a certain dream wedding. Um, what would you say about that, especially looking at the wedding that you had? Would you say you had your dream wedding? Are you happy? If you went back, if you were to do your wedding right now, again, would you do it exactly the same or would you do less or would you do more? Uh, I think those days are very different from today because one, not so many people did weddings. Uh -huh. So even the simple wedding that happened, I mean, it was the talk <laughs> of the village. Mm -hmm. And for us, the fact that our wedding also happened in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and the villagers were yeah. able to come mm -hmm. in, in two buses yeah. to attend that wedding, I mean, it was the talk <laughs> during those days. Yeah. Uh, but I don't remember any time comparing my wedding with any other wedding. In any case, as I said, I had just finished, uh, you know, <laughs> form six, yeah. school. I didn't have much time to prepare. Even the wedding gown that I used that time was a borrowed gown uh, from somebody else. It was okay those days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it could fit, yes. you know, somebody. It was okay. So I didn't. I don't remember ever comparing myself or feeling like I I, I didn't have the wedding that I needed to have. Mm -hmm. It was a good day, and my dream. I had you know achieved my dream yeah. of getting married yeah. to him, yeah. uh, and life just began. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, will, I would like you, uh, maybe even both of you, to, to, to say something um, to somebody who is uh, watching, uh, the younger people who are watching and they are planning their weddings, um, and just speak to what you think are the essential things, I mean, in a marriage. Because, I mean, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of comparison these days. There's a lot of us going out. It's, I don't think it's anymore a family affair. Now we have WhatsApp groups and you invite people you haven't talked to in ages and you're inviting them right from the diary payments and to the, you know, and all those things. I would like you to give uh, a few words of advice to those who are watching, but we're going to come back to that in just a bit. We want to take a short, very short commercial break for you to uh, get maybe a glass of water, uh, but don't touch that dial do not go anywhere apart from maybe getting some water and then you're going to be back they're going to be giving us tips uh speaking to us about what what they think we can do different um for the betterment of our own lives you're going to be right back in a moment We have branded merchandise for the theme of the year 2022, The Great Couch. To order, kindly send your size and the color of your preference to the number on your screen. The t-shirt goes for 700 shillings and the hoodie for 2,350 shillings. Oh man, it's amazing. This year, the Harvest Conference comes early in April 2022. But wait, there's more. Our conference is coming to us from the 3rd of April through to the 8th of April. I am so excited. And in this year of the Great Catch, we are bringing it back. Yes, we are going to be having boarding delegates as well as day delegates. Having heard the good news that Harvest Conference comes early this year, that is 3rd to the 8th of April, I am here to let you know that registration is ongoing. That is 1,000 Kenyan shillings for the day delegates and 2,500 for the boarding delegates. You'd want to pass by the registration desk to register as well as grab yourself the Great Catch sticker at 100 Kenyan shillings. I for sure will be there. 
I'll be looking forward to seeing you there. This year we are coming all the way back. All those things that we've not had the opportunity to do in about two years, we would love to do them right this time. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be having theme exposition every morning. And then we are bringing the Harvest Conversations live and direct to you in the mid-morning sessions, talking about real issues that affect the young believer. We're also going to be having great workshops in the afternoon, talking about things that surround us in our everyday life. And in the evenings, we're going to have a wonderful time of revival in the presence of God. Our activities, our days are power packed. And I really don't know why anyone would want to miss this. See you there. I for sure will be there. I'm counting on seeing you there. We continue to remind you to follow us on all our social media platforms. That is YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, and Podcast for daily updates and encouragement. We have amazing stuff lined up for you. All right, welcome back. We are glad that you are still on, still watching. If you're just joining us in this second half, this is Harvest Conversations. And on set with me, I have Mr. and Mrs. Ndungo Marira, uh, Sir Peterson and Mrs. Jane. And we are so glad we've been learning so much. And just before we took the break, um, uh, it was getting a, a quite intense and I was asking them to speak to us as young people. What, what do they think, what would they say are the essentials of, of marriage right now? Even in the, plan, in the place of planning a wedding, what would they say are the essentials? What's the important things um, in this day and age especially? I want to throw it to um, Mrs. Marira to kick us off with that one. Karibu sana. Thank you. Uh, when it comes to two people, who have agreed to, to, keep, yeah, to make life together and to live as a couple. Uh, I don't think there is so much of what other people think about. The main and the most important thing for me is, is God in it. Because I want to, to talk from the biblical you know, point of view. When Adam, when God created man, he created Eve for Adam. And, you know, God saw that Adam would not be alone. He would not live alone. He needed a helper. And I think that's the, the, the most basic thing in marriage that man cannot live alone, and it is God's purpose to have a helper for, 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 for man. So when it comes to you know, these two people uniting together and agreeing together to live as man and wife, and we see it in, in Genesis too, whereby uh, you know, it said that God, man shall live his, his father and mother, and cling to his wife, and both shall become one. I think that's the most important thing. Making the, the decision, the decision that God is involved in. Once the two agree, I think the other people who matter there are the parents. Are both, par you know, parents from both sides. Are they uh, for it, or are they in it? Because we all need parental blessings, uh, unless in some few cases where it's not possible. So these are the things about planning for the day, because wedding is just for one day. And I usually tell Peterson, I wish, <laughs> I wish we could make it so simple that even as parents, as we are releasing our children, to get married, you know, we should not uh, 
put so many demands, yeah. like it is there today. Yeah. So many, many demands uh, that unless this happens, my daughter will not live here. Mm. So I think it's, a, it, it's a something that God needs to help us, especially we parents. And when it comes now to the young people, as they plan for their wedding, let them not compare themselves with others. Yeah. Let them know that there is a life even after the big day. Mm. So when, you, when we see people, you know, like the young people, we, know, we have talked to so many. Somebody will go to a, even an extent of taking a whole loan to finance the wedding just for one day. And then issues begin after that. It's very, very sad. Yeah. And there are some church, I don't know, I think it's the Catholic who are so good at conducting mass, yeah. you know, mass yeah. weddings yeah. on a Sunday. Yes. As long as the parties have agreed yeah. and the parents have agreed. Mm -hmm. You know, making it easy mm -hmm. for, for everyone. Yeah. Uh, so me, I would advise the young people, don't work under pressure. You know, don't compare yourself with uh, somebody else. Just be you. Be yourself. The way God, you know, created you, the way God has uh, kept you, and whatever God has for you, if it's acceptable by the person you are dating, and, you know, it's okay. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. It's okay to go to church, talk to bishop, yeah. and tell him, this is how we are. We need a simple wedding. Yeah. I don't think Bishop would, you know, <laughs> throw you away yeah. or tell you, no, we can't have such. Yeah. We have seen such happening. So can we change? Yeah. Can we change our <laughs> way of seeing things? Because that pressure is leading people to so many, many other things that are following people after marriage. Yeah words of wisdom right there. Thank you, Mrs. Maria. I, I would also like you to come in on that, sir, and just let us know about, about those wedding essentials right now. What would you uh, tell the younger, the younger generation, those of us who are still yet to get into a, that and are looking into it? Um, I think the point that she made that be yourself. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm big on that one. I do not compare myself with others, even in all other aspects. And it is important because God made you unique. There is no one else like Mwashigadi, Brian. You are so special. And God brought you for a purpose. And that purpose is set. And you can know yourself but you will not fulfill it by doing what somebody else is doing, thinking they are doing it better than you. One, you will be able to appreciate yourself when you are yourself. You may have shortcomings and so on. So when it comes to doing things, then you shouldn't do like other people do. It's okay to see benchmarks that go, but that should not carry you away. You should go with what you have. And there is also your timing. Timing for me may be now, but yours may be after three years. So you wait on God. So be, be God's friend. Like here I see, Abraham was called God's friend. James 2.23. So if you are God's friend, he made you, you are seeking to know what he wants of you, then you will not have business comparing. And you can get to a point where also it says, Genesis eighteen seventeen. Then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? So you should be able to get to a point where you are seeking to know if God has revealed. He is the, 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 the keeper of secrets. And once it is revealed, it is ours. And so you can go to God and ask, God, are you in this? Like he was saying. Is there anything that I do not know? Is there anything you have hidden? So you are checking yourself to see if you are relating well with God. Once you relate well with God, then you can go and have yours 
just the way you would like to have it. But don't compare with anybody else. I sometimes say, bring me any amount of money that you have and tell me I want to do a wedding with this. And then I'm going to, to work it out with you yeah. so that you can have the wedding, including yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, be yourself. The other point I would like to make is I've seen weddings break very quickly after they have happened where parents take over. They come in and it's like theirs. You look at how they are dressed. They are dressed just as smartly as the girl who is getting married. And where are they sitting? Celebrating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you are coming to look to see where is the bride and you can't quite see the bride, the bride should be standing out. Yeah? And where they sit, I have seen a wedding where the bride and the bridegroom are sitting down there, but the parents are up there. So it's like the ones that are being seen and being entertained and so on. <laughs> so parents should support, but should not take the glory of it. Yeah. And, and, and so you, they should not take over. And I, I heard a song that was saying, the Lord has taken over. Mm -hmm. So let the Lord take over, yeah. lead you, guide you, and parents seek guidance, seek their blessings, mm -hmm. because it is important. Unless... It is very tough. But have friends also. Yeah. True friends. Not everybody in the WhatsApp and bringing them. And they are trying to make it their wedding. Mm. You determine yours. Be the driver. And seek help where you have to seek help. Our days, we were not going out to seek help from outside. But we conducted it with what we have. Mm -hmm. And so, it is not good to do a wedding. Have a loan. And then after you have... Married, you have loans to pay, and you're already having differences. Mm -hmm. It is best to do a wedding. I wish one could do a wedding without having to go for help and let the gifts come and be happy opening the gifts the following day. Mm -hmm. And that's what you live by, mm -hmm. or pay off the expenses that you may have had. Mm -hmm. But when you have asked all your friends to bring all the money, spend it on that day, you are actually going to have a hard time mm -hmm. after that. And it is best to plan it so that you can do it within limits rather than overdoing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, such great words of wisdom from both Mr. and Mrs. Madeira. Just, I think some of the essentials that both of them have covered is, is God in it, you know? Um, the, the other essential people, the, the, you and the person you're marrying, so the couple, and then the parents on both sides, if both of you are in it, then I think, uh, and God is in it, I think the triangle is complete. I think the rest of it ni, is what we say, it's not any story, it's only my details. The rest of the, the essentials have already been covered. Then being yourself, are you yourself or are you just looking at the other people? And I like what Mr. Marera had said much earlier, that you don't know whose grandfather, you know, who is my grandfather and what he's giving me such that I have, I can afford to put together this or, you know, um, so just being being myself, and I think that's a really that's quite the empowerment. You don't have to do the the crazy wedding. I mean, I'm thinking they've been married 43 years, and they are talking about their wedding, and I'm thinking, wow, um, it it sounds so simple, and it's just they covered just the necessary bases. They were together. They were there. Their parents were clearly in it. God was clearly in it. They've lasted this long. Um, because we have seen weddings that have been quite big and, you know, they are no longer together. Sad to say. So be yourself and then friendship. I think that's also another really good place. I love the, the fact that you'd rather have friends come and bring you the bahashas instead of milking all the bahashas even before and then on the day of the wedding there's there's really nothing there's even people are coming uh, somebody would say i'm going to that wedding just so that i can have the plate of food that i paid for as opposed to saying i want to go and celebrate with them and bring this gift along with me yes L let me add one more thing mm -hmm. I, you know when you do something and complete it you feel good yeah Actually, you should celebrate. And I was thinking, I was hearing the other day, I should have breaks. I shouldn't sit from morning to evening doing some work. Mm -hmm. I should stand up every 30 minutes and celebrate that I have done that piece of job for 30 minutes mm -hmm. by going to take a glass of water. Yeah. I'm celebrating. Mm -hmm. Or getting out and doing something else. So there is 
need to celebrate when you do something. And wedding is a big thing. Mm -hmm. It's a climax. Today, I'm still very proud of this lady. Because I worked <laughs> hard <laughs> to get to that point. Yes. I planned everything. I looked and asked for help from within the, from my grandma and father. Mm -hmm. He gave me a cow to add to what wow. I was taking to her, wow. uh, to their home. And so today, 43 years, I'm still proud I did it. Mm -hmm. You must put in effort. Mm -hmm. Then you can enjoy it. Because if you earn money, you know if you go steal money, it's money that's not going to help you. But if you have sweat for the money, mm -hmm. when you go for a holiday, you are actually enjoying it. Yeah. So I'm still enjoying my marriage wow. because of investment I did 43 years ago. Wow. It, it, it was, <laughs> you know, so a, as you plan yours, how much are you investing in it? Mm -hmm. How much have you put in? Mm -hmm. Or have you gotten this and that and that and that and that? Who is marrying? Is it those or me? I should put in a stick, a big one, yeah. a very big one, at least not half, not less than, <laughs> not less than half. And if you can do the whole hog, do it. Let it be simple, and I can tell you that the wedding people will look at in Facebook and elsewhere mm. as unique. But when it is to be like so and so's, I went to a wedding that cost 200 million shillings. What? Mm -hmm. Yes, 200 million shillings. It was here in Kenya. It was at uh, Safari. Safari Park. And you know what? I was not invited. But you went. I get crushed. <laughs> we get crushed. Because I had, here is a wedding for 200 million shillings. I said, no, I must. <laughs> no, 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 no. I need to go there. And we talked. And we went right up to Safari Park, and it was late. Every square inch on the ground the was grass. late and right into the sky, and there were 10 containers of flour from Dubai. Now I believed. Wow. And we were so much welcomed. We were guests. Oh. And the food, it was, I don't know, the whole field. Salads from here to I don't know where. Very, very, very special. So the guy may have paid the price. Yeah. I can still recall. So if you don't pay a price, mm -hmm. then that is not good foundation for the lasting of your marriage. Pay the price. Wow. Pay the price, ladies and gentlemen. Pay the What? Wow. I mean, this is Harvest Conversations. Here we have real, authentic, passionate talks about the things that concern us, especially the youthful believer. And wow, I think, I don't know, I, I'm really short for words. I think that's really powerful. That's a really, really powerful thing. I want us, to, as we begin to, to land this now, to just answer um, the, the question. Uh, as, as you talked about investment and paying the price and the stake that you put in, um, you had already talked earlier about the friendship that both of you shared for a long time, especially because you, may, you grew up together, your parents were also friends. Um, do you think um, that the friendship that you put in in the earlier years and that you've continued to work on, would you say that that is an integral part of uh, your relationship right now, the quality of your relationship right now? Or what would you say is the essential? In, 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 in a few words, what would you say is the essential part of the quality of your relationship right now? You know, like I said earlier, God testified Abraham was his friend. Mm -hmm. Friendship are very key. They are a foundation. Mm -hmm. And true, true friendships. Not friendship for the purpose of gaining or taking advantage. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was one night where somebody went and called his friends. He called his friends from around mm -hmm. that he was in big trouble and that he needed help. And so they came, and he had prepared meat and soup, and their friends came. He was trying to test who is a friend, who is a true friend. And so they came one by one. It was at night, at nine, and it go to midnight, and so on. 
And when they had eaten and uh, enjoyed themselves, he then started calling one after the other to take them aside and tell them what he needed to be done. And you know what he told the first one? I have killed a man. I have called you so that you can help me to bury the man. And when he heard that, he took the first opportunity to go out, mm -hmm. to run away. And he told all the guests one by one. Mm -hmm. And he only had, I don't know, two people that chose to stay on. He was trying to test who is a true friend. Mm -hmm. So test your friends, whether they are true or not. Mm -hmm. Listen to their counsel and those that tax stick to you, like Jonathan and David, those are the friends to have. Okay. Yeah. So friendship. Mm -hmm. Friendship is important, Mrs. Marie. Um, maybe I think uh, in marriage, mm -hmm. what I know and what has brought us this far, one is to know that God was in it. Yes. Two, we were friends. Mm -hmm. Friendship is very key in any marriage. And I usually tell young people, you know, marry, your fr marry somebody you know is a friend. Because if you are not friends, many years later, or even some time later, yeah. you know, because issues arise in marriage, differences arise. But when you are friends, you are able to sort out those differences, you know, casually, you are able to even, you know, talk about it and pray about it. Uh, but if you are not friends, then it becomes very, very hard to understand each other, to be patient with each other. Mm -hmm. So I would advise the young people, and that's what, you know, that's my advice to them. Marry somebody you can relate with freely. Whether you disagree, you still remain friends. Whether you have, you know, any difficult issues arising in your marriage, when you are friends, you still stick together and sort out those, you know, uh, issues together. Sure. So, so I'm <laughs> saying, same, as friends, you will make mistakes, you know, silly mistakes, but you will still accommodate each other mm. and you will be able to laugh it off and, you know, mm. move on. And know that we all have <laughs> shortcomings yeah. and therefore we should forgive each other mm -hmm. because it's fitting to do to do so, and Jesus said so, that we need to forgive each other. So I think you should also discuss how to resolve differences. Yeah. Not only differences, but conflicts. Yeah. Who will you, can you have a listening ear so that you get to understand? So having to argue about things, mm -hmm. let's learn how to argue, but let's still agree. Uh, because we are still friends, mm -hmm. yeah. Friendship. I, I, if, if you haven't heard it since they began, I think they've talked about friendship in their old, in their younger days. Friendship in their courtship. Friendship in their marriage, um, as they kept shuttling in between to and fro, from the kids to the mommy, from the um, Nairobi with the kids to daddy, and so on. And so friendship, I think, throughout to this very day, our recording day today, friendship through and through. I think that's a key ingredient. We want to land it right about there. But I want to ask a fun question that we've learned uh, to love here at the Harvest Conversations. If you would describe your um, relationship as a meal, what would it be? What would the meal be? Um, my grandmother died like um, about a year ago. Um, and she was 105. She was still eating sugar cane. So let me take sugarcane as a, a meal. Okay. Um, and when you take sugarcane, and you, you need to use your teeth to crush it. And there is juice that comes out of it. And you swallow it, and it's very nice. Mm -hmm. But you also sometimes hurt your mouth mm -hmm. inside. And sometimes you can get some blood coming out. And then you also have a product coming, coming in. So marriage is also a mix of good things and you have to let go some things you have to uh, wash your mouth or 
uh, take a mouthwash to heal uh, what has been hurt inside. So we can have arguments, but we can go over that and be able to overcome it. Uh, but we also enjoy marriage. There are good times. And sometimes in our family, we, we, we do take time to evaluate each other. Um, and so we test the meal, whether it is good or not. And we would say, let's talk about Abigail. How is she? What are the good points about her? What does she excel in? And what does she need to improve on? And this is the whole family, and we write it down. So we are able to check each other and be able to tell <coughs> each other where to improve and so on. So it's a meal, you can enjoy it, but it can be burnt also and not be enjoyed. So you choose what is good and move on with it. Wow. The rest, you pay little attention. Even if the chapati is uh, like maca, you know, that night um, you have forgotten, you go over it. After all, there is bread uh, that you can take. <laughs> yes. All right. I love the example of sugar cane. Thank you. Mrs. Marita, will, will that be the same meal? What, what meal would you pick if, if you'll describe your relationship as a meal? Uh, okay, if I describe my relationship with Peterson as a meal, uh, I think I will, I will point out on two. One, I'm the one who is mostly in the kitchen. You know, I take care of what he eats or what we eat. It's not an easy job or it's not an easy work to combine ingredients, different ingredients to bring out a dish. But when you look at the end product, you know, after you have dealt with all those those raw, you know, all those ingredients and what you have come out with, I think it tells you that even in marriage, we all have differences. We have weaknesses, we have strengths, but when we combine our strengths together and, you know, accommodate each other, we bring out the best. And that's how a relationship is able to stand, or a marriage is able to stand. You forget about, you know, you overlook the weaknesses, the shortcomings, because all of us have shortcomings. Uh, just as the kitchen ingredients are not the same, there are some strong ones, others are just spices and, you know, those small, small things that you add into food. The other one, uh, I'll compare it with uh, buffet. I, I know you, we all go, like he, he, he talked about buffet. Uh, you have seen people, or I have seen, we have seen, when you go to, you know, where food is laid, lots of it, and you are to select. There are people who don't think about what to eat and what not to eat what to take and what not, what not to take. You'll see somebody with a plate taking everything, a bit of everything. Ugali nyeupe na ya brown. Sukuma, spinach, managu. Chicken, boiled, fried. Stew, you know. It's time to eat. You, you put all that stuff together, fish, Ya kuwekwa kwa mafuta na yenye ikona na soup. Mutu anajaza sahani. So at the end of that meal, you suffer constipation when you eat everything. And there are some things even in your home you don't even cook, you don't like. But when you go to a buffet, you see people being tempted to take almost everything. Mchelea brown, pilau, white, you know? in one plate. So even in marriage, we should be careful, select what is, you know, what works for you. You may be, like, you may be a fan of, you know, roasted nyamachoma. I may not be. I should not pick nyamachoma. <laughs> so 
let's pick what, is, what works best for us, not for others, because each marriage is unique. Uh, every relationship is unique. What works for us, uh, uh, Peterson and I, is not the same thing that works for somebody else. And that's how, you know, we should live. You know, t picking and taking what is best for our marriage. What makes us happy. What will not give us constipation. Because if we pick all, everything, every, every voice that we hear, you know, every weakness that I see or he sees me with, I mean, that marriage will not last. Well, there is something that I'm afraid of that may hinder me uh, to perform. And so I looked at a verse here, First Peter 5, 7, which says, Husbands, be considerate as you live with your wives, as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. So this is a gift of life, what she is describing. And we should be considerate so that we can live well. Um, and the reason that is ending in this verse is so nothing will hinder your prayers. So I could be praying, but it's just hitting the roof and coming down. Because where she is, she is not blessing me. She is not praying for me because of what I have done, because of gurus that are not settled and so on. So it is best to sort it out so that we are clean to each other. And we pray for each other and pray as a family and discuss issues and settle them. Because if you, if you, if you don't settle an issue, it gets to your hard disk and it can be full and it can overflow and you find yourself moving around and you have a, a red flag and everyone can see but you cannot see. So I think that's very important that you be considerate in this marriage so that you are considering your wife and treating her with respect. Yes. And that's why I gave her the name Abigail because I respect her. For me, maybe the final shot. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I will uh, concur with this verse, in, I think in First Peter 4, that says that love covers a multitude of sins. You know, when love is present, it covers everything. When I love Peterson, I mean, whatever else he does will not matter to me because I love him and I, I care for him and I know that God has given me a responsibility upon him, you know, to walk, like, uh, to walk through life with him until we get there. And this is something <laughs> that really challenges me or helps me, that I need to present him to God mm. <laughs> on that last day. So how will I present him? Will I make it to that very end? So the way I treat him, the way we relate matters a lot to me because God has given me that responsibility for, him, for God to fulfill his purpose through me. Amen. Thank you. Uh, that's quid pro quo. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would say that uh, for that reason, yeah. I have forgiven her future. <laughs> Sins. Wow. Yeah. So wow. we we are not parting. Yeah. yeah. I, hey, I love it. Yeah. For three years in, and they are not going anywhere away from each other. I love that. That's a beautiful place for us to learn this. Love one another deeply. Respect one another. Be considerate. Pay the price. Um, be yourself. So many nuggets of wisdom that we can get from this. You could put in some more in the comment section so that other people who are just joining us and who will come to watch this video later will also have quick take homes uh, for themselves and even for people that they love. Thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Marira. We are so honored to have you on set today. Thank you for sharing 43 years of wisdom and experience uh, with us. And even though I think everybody on set today is significantly younger than that 43 itself, 
we are all younger than your marriage. Um, not to talk about your very years, the years of your existence. Um, I think we already have now, on top of our own years, 43 years of experience put together in those few minutes that we've been here. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we will have you back another time as we get more questions and comments and feedback. On the same, please remember to send in your questions, your feedback, even concerning the Mariras that were in, on set with us today. 43 years of marriage and still going strong to the glory of God the Father. Please remember all those things. Keep your eyes peeled on this channel. We continue to bring you so much more because that's our part to play in the relationships and the marriages that we have in this, our generation, to the glory of God the Father. That's about it. We want to take... Uh, a break. We actually want to call it a wrap for now. We want to see you again next Monday, same place, same time. Remember to bring a friend, and until next time, God bless you. Amen. Thank you.